Hello everyone and welcome to part 9 of our series about vSphere with Tenzu on NS16. Today we're going to look at ingress. So goal of today is that we can access a web application through a specific URL and only using that URL only by using the ingress resource YAML and having a layer 7 load banners in NS16. So first of all I have created a deployment which consists of three replicas of an Nginx pod and um, I've already deployed um, the pods and the deployment through the, pod, through the deployment uh, are the, are the pods are deployed. Second step is that we need an Nginx service because the intra ingress YAML we're going to reference the service. So again, this is very similar to what the, what the video about the services before. So in this case, it's the default cluster IP. Um, with the name Nginx servers, looking for app Nginx, and we expose port 80, and the target port is obviously port 80 as well on TCP. And the selector would be app colon Nginx, and as we can see, we obviously tag um, the pods in the deployment using app Nginx, so the service can dynamically find the related pods and expose the ports for that pod and load balance the pods. So, um, that's the Nginx service YAML file. Let's have a look at the Nginx ingress YAML file. So this is a very, very basic example just to show you what's what's being realized in NS16. So kind is ingress. I give it a name Nginx ingress. And I have one specific rule. So I'm going to allow ingress.ray.silab.local as the host rule um, to be serviced by this ingress uh, load balancer, this layer 7 load balancer. So at NSXT, there will be a layer 7 load balancer created, which inspects obviously the HTTP packets and sees if you're using this URL to point, this, point it to a specific service, in this case, Nginx service on service port 80. So um, um, this allows us to, to, to check the availability for, for the pods on port 80. Um, so I first need to apply the service. So um, in F Nginx service YAML. Oops, typo there. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong directory. I'm using the alpha namespace, by the way, that's right. That's why I was in the wrong directory. So I've now applied the service. And I can do a kubectl describe service nginx service. So we can see um, using the selector app equals nginx, we get a cluster IP and it discovers the endpoints being the pods um, running from the deployment I've already um, configured. So we'll now do a kubectl apply. F and then nginx dash ingress. So this will create the ingress. So when creating ingress, it might take a few minutes for the external IP to be exposed. Obviously, on NSXT, there are some objects being realized. Um, an IP needs to be allocated to the ingress for that namespace as a first, as a in, from the ingress IP pool. Uh, the load balance needs to be configured. Um, so that can take a fair minute. Uh, kubectl describe was what I was looking for, ingress, Nginx ingress. So what can we see here? So the name obviously in the namespace, but here we can see it has allocated the dot two ingress IP from my one to one dot zero slash twenty four ingress IP range managed by NSXT. So I'm I'm using port eighty to expose um, the pods, and we have a host rule ingress dot ray dot sa lab dot local, which points to the the backend's nginx service. I'm listening on port eighty, and it also exposes the endpoints, the pods. Uh, exposed through that service. And then uh, an annotation by NCP and events. And here we can see that it has successfully realized an NSX resource. And that will mean that it has successfully configured a load balancer for this namespace. 
So how would this look in NSX Steve? Obviously, the starting page would be looking at my alpha namespace. Uh, let me refresh this page. And now we can see it is exposing another Kubernetes service. Here we can see the Nginx service. It has three networking objects uh, attached to this. So obviously, the distributed load balance objects for the Nginx service. But it should also have a small load balancer and a um, a objects relating to the load balancer rules, so the HTTP rules. So um, this is the cluster IP being exposed and then a server pool for the load balancer. So let's start there. Here we can see similar to the service type load balancer that we have three members in the server pool, which are actually the pods being exposed. And one virtual server. And this is the load balancer, obviously. So here we can also see the IP address and we can see it's type layer seven HTTP. So this shows we're listening on port 80 on ingress IP.2 as a layer seven virtual server on the load balancer. If we expand this, we can also see the load balancer rules. And this is very useful if you're working while you're working with ingress. So here we can see the actual forwarding rules and we can find one rule being attached. And that's obviously for the condition to be met that the HTTP request header, host header actually equals ingress.ray.salab.local um, to for, for, for being met to forward requests to the pods. It's also showing the related server pool I shown earlier. So this should work right now. Let's test this. So on my jump box, I can see that if I use ingress.ray.salab.local as a URL in my browser, I'm able to access one of the pods um, um, in that deployment for NG, as an Nginx pod. If I'm using, although a different URL, I would, should, should get an error message. Yeah, because it's not allowing, it doesn't have a rule matching this URL to forward the request uh, to any service, um, which I haven't configured. So furthermore, what's nice to see is if we are going to scale out, let's say a deployment, and I want four replicas instead of three, that the servers, the ingress should automatically detect that. Okay, so again, let's scale, um, scale this deployment to four. Apply. Deployment. So we now should see a new pod being created. As you can see, it's pending. can take a bit as well. And now the pod is running. It has allocated the IP address dot 34. And if you go back to the ingress, describe ingress and Unix ingress, we should see that the um, backends are automatically uh, discovered through the Nginx service listening on port 80. So now you can see it has added 34 as one of the endpoints as a backend for this ingress. Also going back to NSXT, we should be able to see this on the virtual server because we should have an additional member on this virtual server. As you can see, we have now four members, which means that the additional pod is being discovered automatically and load balance through the ingress controller, through the ingress instance on NSXT on the load balancer. So for now, this concludes our demo about ingress. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And until next time, where are we going to discuss uh, network policies? See you then. Bye bye.